Right, so welcome to the second interactive session uh, by Paula Dorsa. I hope I'm pronouncing your name roughly correctly. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Um, uh, right, so Paula has previously worked as a software engineer for Google and Golden Sachs, I believe. And uh, she was well acquainted with being the only woman in the room. So um, she's very passionate about being uh, bringing women to tech and she joined as a co-founder and a lead developer in Imagey Labs in Stockholm. So today we hope to hear more about it in this interactive session. Um, so take away, Paula. And if anybody at any point have any questions, feel free to ask in the Matrix channel or directly into the Zoom session. Um, yeah, and I think we also have quite a lot of people watching on YouTube. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. So yeah, today I'll be giving a workshop on creative coding in Python, uh, specifically using the tools that we have developed at Imagilabs. And so I'll start with just another quick intro of myself. Um, so I'm one of the co-founders and also the lead developer at Imagilabs, and I'm based in Stockholm in Sweden, which is where I'm calling from today. Um, and I studied computer science uh, at the University in Abu Dhabi, at NYU Abu Dhabi, and I am originally from Romania. Cool. And then in terms of Imagilabs, um, so our goal at Imagilabs is to equip and empower teenage girls to shape the future with tech, because we believe that if technology is the future, then women need to be equally involved in tech in order to have an equal chance at shaping the future with tech. Great, and in terms of the products that we've developed, um, so we have a mobile app, the Imagilabs app, through which you actually can learn how to code. Um, and you also, uh, by learning how to code, you also are able to create projects in the Imagilabs app that you can then share in the community that we have. And you can also upload them um, to something called an Imagicharm, which is a device, um, it's like a smart accessory um, that connects to your phone via Bluetooth. Um, and basically allows you to express yourself uh, by showing what you've created with others. And these are just some of the examples of projects that have been created by users in the Imagilabs app. Um, so these are eight by eight um, pixel projects. Um, and you can see here that we have animations and all sorts of different things that you can do. So even though it seems to be a relatively limited um, workspace, um, there's definitely a lot that you can create with this. And this, these are just a few of the over 10,000 projects that have been created by our app users. Great, so today we're actually going to learn how to create projects like this um, using the Imagilabs app. So what I'd like participants to do now is head to either the App Store or Google Play um, and download the Imagilabs app. And if you don't have access to a mobile device, um, you can also uh, use our web app for this workshop, which um, its features are a bit more limited because it's still in beta, uh, but you can uh, definitely use that for the purpose of this workshop. So I'll just give people uh, a few minutes to do that. And as you can see on the right of my screen, I actually have the Imagilabs app up on my phone. So um, this is uh, the iOS app and Android app look a bit different. This is the iOS app, uh, but as soon as you have the app installed and you're signed up, uh, we're gonna head to this create section where we're going to be spending most of our time during this workshop. So this is a code editor in the Imagilabs app. So yeah, I'll just wait three minutes or so um, to give people some time. Yeah, thank you for sharing the link. Okay, and while people are signing up, I'll just go out to get uh, an Imagine Charm so I can show that to you as well.
Okay, and if I could maybe get like a thumbs up in the chat either here or on the matrix um, chat once someone has successfully signed up. Okay, it looks like we have one sign up here. I'll just wait 30 more seconds. And if you're having any technical difficulties, the slides are linked to the um, event, so you can definitely go through these later. Um, and I will also be coding live throughout the session, so you'll be able to watch this as well. And just quickly, I wanted to show you the magic charm. So it's this really cute accessory. Um, you can see here, there's a little smiley project on it already. And throughout this workshop, I'll be also uploading some code to it so you can see what it looks like. Okay, I think we can get started with the workshop then. And the first slides are again, just introducing the concept of uh, coding with Imagilabs. Um, so you still have some time to catch up if you haven't finished signing up yet. Great. So um, as you saw in the projects that I was showing you earlier, we basically have this eight by eight matrix um, that you can work with. And this matrix is very similar to a chessboard. Um, so over here we have a chessboard and you can see that the rows um, are, are numbered and then the columns have these letters. So for example, if you wanted to um, identify this um, a position in the board, what you would do is you would look at the row number and column number. So it's on row six and column D um, and in chess notation, we call this D6. And so this is really similar to how the Imagilabs matrix uh, works. So the Imagilabs matrix is called M, which is just short for matrix. And when you're um, programming in Python, something that's important to keep in mind is that we start counting from zero instead of one. So here you can see that both the rows and columns are numbered um, and the numbers are from zero to seven. Okay, so M has eight rows and eight columns. Uh, and this means that we have a total of what we call 64 pixels. Um, so we call them pixels because as you saw in the Imagi charm, these are basically uh, lit up LEDs, which kind of look like pixels and you're basically kind of creating pixel art. Okay, and now we're going to see how we identify pixels on the matrix. So on the chessboard, you looked at the row number and column number, and this is very similar to what we do in the Imagilabs app. So for example, we have this pixel lit up over here, which is on row two and uh, column three. So the way you would identify it is by using these two numbers and the name of the matrix, which is M. Um, so in this case, we're going to do M of two and three because the row is two and the column is three. And I'm actually going to now type this into the Imagilabs app and you can go ahead and do this as well. So again, as I was saying, uh, we're going to be spending our time in the create section. This looks a bit different, uh, a bit different between the various apps we have, uh, but you should be able to end up on a code editor that looks similar to this. So I'm going to start typing over here, M of two and three equals on. So what we're doing now is we're just turning this pixel on by typing this in. And now I'm going to run my code. Okay, I got a success message. So it seems like everything should be okay. And now I have two options. I can either preview my code in the app or upload it to the charm. We're going to be using the preview button since I'm not sure if people have a magic charms today. But if you tap preview here, you can see that this uh, pixel now shows up as lit up. Um, on our matrix. And I'm also going to just upload it to the charm so you can see how that works if you're curious. So I connected via Bluetooth and now I can see the pixel is lit up here. Great, so we just wrote our first line of code in the Imagilabs app. Um, great, so I'm just going to show these again. This is what the app used to look like. So you would go to create and this is similar to what the Android app looks like. So you create and then you um, select this new blank project option, and then you type in the code, um, and then you press run. And that's how you end up with this option to either preview or upload your, your code. So hopefully people were able to get um, that far and actually preview their code um, in the Imagilabs app. 
And then now we're going to go on to um, doing something a bit more complex. So what we're going to do is create this smiley where we have several pixels which are, are lit up. So in order to do this, what we have to do is just add some extra lines of code for, the, for these pixels in the smiley. So I'm going to start with these I pixels. So I'm going to do M of two and two and set this equal to OM. And then let's see what the second pixel is on. So it's on row two, column five. So I'll type that in as well. If anyone here wants to tell me what the first mouth pixel um, position is on the very left, I'll start typing. So it looks like the row is five and the column is one. So I'll just type it in here. And I see someone uh, is happy that we have a web app since it's a bit tough to type on your phone and I agree. Uh, but one of the reasons we made this a mobile first experience is that because through our research um, with girls and not just girls, but teens in general, we found that they spend a lot of time on their phones. Um, so we were trying to leverage that um, and try to bring a productive experience um, to their mobile lives. M of six and three. But I agree, if you're a more experienced coder, you probably prefer typing on your uh, laptop or computer. Okay. And as you are uh, typing, you can always, oh, awesome, Vicky. Thanks so much for backing us on Kickstarter. Um, so as you're typing, you can actually run your code and uh, preview it just to make sure that you're on the right path. So I can see this looks pretty similar to the smiley on my slides. So I'm gonna continue typing some code here. M of six and five equals on. And I think now I just have one more pixel left, um, which is the edge of the mouth. M of five and six equals on. Cool. And then I'm gonna run that, preview that. Great, I have a smiley and I'll just upload it to my charm again. And I can see here, I have a smiley. Awesome. Cool, I'll just leave this uh, code up here a bit um, in case people are still typing, um, but hopefully you are, yeah, you were able to create this project so far. And you might've noticed um, after signing up that there's this explore section in the mobile apps. Um, so you can actually share the projects that you've created um, to the community there. Okay, nice, <laughs> sneaky smiley, great. Um, and then you also have the option to share these projects outside of the app. So there's a share button in the iOS app um, and you can add like backgrounds to your projects or even take photos or create stickers out of the projects that you've created. Cool. Okay, now let's move on to um, adding some color to our projects. So, so far what we've done is basically just turn pixels on um, but it's actually possible to add some color, which is uh, something you've seen uh, probably in the projects earlier. So there are several ways of adding colors. Uh, we'll start with this one. So we have some keys um, in the keyboard in the app. If you tap on this like rainbow key, uh, you can see some uh, color keys over here and which are the colors of the rainbow. And so what we can do with these uh, colors is actually type them instead of on. So we just type in this first letter of the color. So like either R or O or Y or whichever color you prefer and just uh, replace whatever is on with one of these colors. So I'm gonna do that for the eye colors. So let's go with like a green eye, for example. And now I'm gonna run this code again and preview it. And I can see that my, my eye now has turned green. And then I can do the same thing with the second eye pixel and make sure to run your code whenever you make a change. Um, so the latest changes are reflected and I'll preview this again. And now I can see I have two green eyes. Um, and so we can continue doing this with all of the, the pixels that we have. Um, so here uh, you can see on the slide, the eyes were set to blue. Of course you can use any of the colors you, you like. So let's do the same with the mouth pixels. Um, so I'll add some purple lipstick to my smiley and I'll just quickly replace all of these on pixels with P. And I'm gonna run this code, preview it. And I can see here that um, 
I have a smiley with the green eyes and a purple mouth. And again, it's up on my charm. And you can see here that it shows up. Cool. So I'll just move on to this next slide so you can see some uh, sample code over here. Were people able to get their smileys colored? And again, these are just like, this is a very limited number of color options. Um, and on the next slide, I'll show you how to, awesome, that's a small smiley, I really like it, cute. Um, and I'll now show you how to actually add some more colors to your projects. So you can actually generate millions of colors in the Imagilabs app. Um, and we can do that using something called RGB colors. Um, so using the RGB color scheme. So RGB is a color system that constructs, well, not all of the colors, but at least millions of colors from the combination of red, green, and blue. And the way we specify RGB colors in the Imagilabs app is by typing in these uh, parentheses, um, round like brackets this time, and then typing in three color values. Um, so these color values represent the amounts of red, green, and blue that we want in the color that we're creating. So we're going to learn a bit more about this through a little quiz. Okay, so can anyone here tell me what color this RGB value represents? Um, knowing that the first color stands for red, the second number is green, and the third number is blue. So it looks like we have a lot of red in this color. So yes, we end up with the color red indeed. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and change one of the pixels in my smiley to this color. Um, and also something you should definitely do as you're typing is don't forget to save your code so there's a save button in the app uh, and on the web app, you can type in a name for your project and then save it. So I'm just gonna call this smiley. Um, so I can make sure to go back to this later if I want to. But for now, what I wanted to do is replace this green value with um, this color. So I'm gonna do 255.00. Run that preview. Okay, so one eye did turn red here. Great, and let's see. Yep, so the color was indeed red. What about this color? Zero to 55, zero. So we have no more red here, no more blue, uh, but we have a lot of green. So we ended up with this color here. And this is equivalent to typing G in the app. So for example, here, if I replace this G with zero to 55, zero, I'm going to end up with the same uh, green color that I had before. And of course, it's possible to not just use 0 and 255 values, um, but we are just doing this for now, um, just to get accustomed with these three, three values. OK, but here we have a bit of a trickier one. Um, so we want to end up with magenta. And you can get a bit of a hint of what the RGB value would be uh, by looking at the, the three color circles on the, the right of the slide. So we can see that we combine red and blue uh, we end up with this purplish magenta color. And so actually the way we do this is by using um, equal amounts of red and blue. So I'm going to try to do this for one of the mouth pixels. So I'll set 255, 0, 255, run that, preview that. And yeah, I can see here there's a, a slightly more magenta or pinkish color than the purple that I used uh, before. Great, and then we have yellow, which again is a combination of two of the of these main colors. So for yellow, we would use um, red and green, and we would end up with this uh, color. So we use red, green, and no blue. And if we run that, preview that, we can see that we ended up with this uh, yellow color. Um, and if you are using the iOS app, uh, after this workshop, you can go ahead and complete uh, Quest 3 in order to unlock this design tool that you can use to create more colors. Um, and if you're using the web app, the design tool is automatically accessible. Unfortunately, not available on Android yet, uh, but you can just generate colors also using Google's color picker. Um, so 
here you have some examples of colors on a color wheel and their RGB representations. Okay, so now I've already done some replacing of these predefined colors with RGB colors. And I'm going to try and go ahead and create some colors using values other than 255 and zero. So I'm just going to go with a random color here. So I will use equal amounts of like red and green and then use a lot more blue. And let's just see what happens there. Okay, so I ended up again with a purplish color. Um, and then again, you'll be able to use a design tool on the iOS app if you go through some of the, the quests. Um, and in this case, I'm just gonna pick um, this like aqua color and I'm gonna long press on the color, which will copy it. And then all I have to do is head here and uh, paste that color into my code. And I'll do that for the rest of the pixels as well. Dun, dun. Okay, and if I run that, preview that, I can see that. And I'm actually gonna go and just change all of these colors to be consistent. Dun, dun. Okay, I'm just gonna type them in. 242209. And then I'll also stick to the same color for the eyes. Okay, let's see what we have so far. Okay, we have an aqua mouth and I'll do some like brownish color which I guess I can do, I'm gonna check the design tool by going over here. Um, okay. Great. Okay, I ended up with this smiley now. And then if we look on this um, sample project on the slide, uh, we can see that we have a slightly different color scheme going on here, but you can use whatever colors you like. And as you can see in my code, sometimes I used spaces, sometimes I did not use spaces between the, the numbers. Best practice is um, to use spaces. That just makes it a bit more readable. Um, but if you're in a hurry or you just wanna type quickly, uh, you can um, just, put the, uh, just separate them with commas without adding an extra space. And again, I will upload this to my charm. And I can see here that I have the smiley, this time with these RGB values. And yeah, so as I mentioned, um, there are some quests in the iOS app. Uh, by doing this workshop, you're actually getting like a 60 minute version of the learning content that we have. And you're actually learning about more than what we currently have in the quests. Um, and we're constantly working on adding more learning content to the app. Uh, but we also teach coding through through workshops like this one. Great, so hopefully people have some RGB smileys um, on their devices. And now we'll find out how to write code a bit faster and also be able to customize our code a bit faster. Um, so we can see here that we actually have, that's a really cute smiley. Uh, and I like the, the different colors um, for the mouth. Awesome. Um, so yeah, for those who are watching maybe on YouTube, I'm just uh, commenting on some of the projects that are being sent in the, the matrix chat. Um, okay, so that's a lot of repeated code. Um, so we're going to find out how we can use um, something called variables to help us code and also change things faster. So if you've done some coding before, you probably have heard of variables, but I'll just give a quick definition here for those who, of you who haven't. So variables help you store and also label pieces of information. And so they consist of two parts. Uh, there's a name and then there's the value that the variable stores. And it's best to pick names that are representative of the information they store. For example, if you wanted a variable that you would use to store an eye color, you could call it I, and this will make your variable easier to, to understand. Um, so here we have this example of a variable called I, and then its value is an RGB value. Uh, and the way you assign values to variables is by simply using the equal sign, which is what we've been using to also assign colors to um, the pixels on our matrix. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to, instead of assigning the color um, every time to our pixels, we're going to store these colors in variables. So here we have them called I and mouth. So I'll just go with I equals, and then I will make I equal to the RGB color that I used. So it's one to eight, 61 to eight. And then I will make another variable called mouth. And I'll set this equal to the mouth color I used, which was one to five, two, four, two, two, zero, nine. Great. And now I'm just going to go swap these all out, which will take a bit of time now. Um, but in the future, you can just use variables from the very beginning and then, gen and then just use them throughout your code. So now I will do this manually. So mouth, mouth. And again, you can call your variables whatever you like. Um, I could have called them E and M if I wanted to save time on typing, but decided to go with these names because if I look at this code again in a year, it will be easier for me to figure out what I was trying to do. Okay, and now if I run this code and preview it, it looks um, identical to what I had before. And that's uh, because all I did was just change the um, uh, the way that I assign these colors to my pixels. But the cool thing about this co code is that if I now want to change the mouth color, for example, instead of having to go and change each of the six mouth pixels, I can just change the value of the mouth variable once, and that will update um, the color for all of my mouth pixels. So for example, here, let's say I actually want to go with one of these color pixels. So I'll go with P instead of an RGB value, run that, preview that and the mouth is set to purple. So you can definitely also use these letter colors as variables, or you can type in another, um, um, another RGB value. So I'm gonna go with 200, 120, or actually let's go with all the same number and see what we end up with. Yeah, so if you use um, basically the same value for all three colors, you're going to end up with either white if you use um, 255, 255, 255, or black if you use 000. And if you use any number in between those two, you'll end up with some sort of gray color. So in this case, it's like a, a lighter gray because we're close to white. Cool. So hopefully you were able to get the variable yourself. Um, you can also just switch to using a variable for one of these. So just for the eye or for the mouth. And don't forget to also save your project. Nice. Cool. OK, so it's only been um, like 30 minutes, but we've already learned about variables and all about RGB values. Um, so I think we've been super productive so far. And we're going to go ahead and learn even more programming concepts. And this, again, is like a super fast tracked uh, way of learning how to code. Um, but hopefully, if you have questions, you can, you can ask, uh, ask them after this workshop. And also, these slides, again, will be available to you. Um, and you can continue learning on your own. Great. OK, so, so far, we've made this smiley. Um, and now we're going to learn how to create um, something that looks a bit like this. So this is a rainbow. Um, and if we were to color each of these pixels individually, um, like what we've done so far, you would basically have to type like 64 lines of code because you would have to access each of these pixels one by one and set them to a certain color. So we're going to learn how we can use um, something called a for loop um, to color this much faster. So we're going to start by just coloring the first line in this project. And again, a bit of uh, coding theory. So for loops help us repeat one or more tasks a certain number of times um, or until a certain condition is met. So there are different types of loops and today we'll be talking about for loops specifically. Um, and so using a for loop, you can have a block of code run for every value within a range. And that might sound a bit abstract, but we're gonna go with like um, an actual example so you can see how this works in, in practice. So again, our goal now was to color this line of code, uh, this line of the matrix and turn it red. 
so let's start by looking at um, what, so with the knowledge we have so far, we probably would have gone and done this, which is just uh, color each of the pixels on this line uh, individually. But if we look at this code, we can see that there are several similarities between all of the lines of, of code here. So does anyone want to point out what is similar between these lines of code? Yes, um, the row is similar. So it looks like they're all on row zero. Yeah, the row in, indeed. And then there's one more similarity here. And the color is indeed red. And then beyond these two similarities, we also see a pattern. Um, so we see that we start at column zero and then we go all the way to, to column seven and we just go one by one through each of these uh, column numbers. So yeah, this just to repeat. So each line of code has the same row number, um, which means that we can create a for loop, which loops over the values that are incrementing, uh, which, is the, which are the column values. Okay, so this is the syntax. Um, through which you would do this. So as I said, we're using a for loop. So we would start by typing the word for, which um, is basically signaling that we are starting to loop over some sort of value. And so what we, what I said earlier was that we want to loop over the column values. And so we do this uh, by writing this uh, variable name for the, the column. So I used call and you could call it whatever you like. You could use C or type the whole word column if you wanted to, but let's just go with call for now. And then we want to loop over a specific range. So the way we do this is by typing in the words in range um, and then typing in the values of the range. So as you, if you look at the code, you can see that we go from the value zero to the value seven, but then it looks like our range goes from zero to eight. And the reason for that um, is that in Python, range from X to Y means all the numbers from X to one less than y. Um, so range zero to eight includes the numbers zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but not eight. And here, something important to note as well is that the code that we want to execute inside of our for loop is indented. Um, and this basically means that we have to type in a tab or a couple of spaces to basically indent this code inside so that our computers or phones know that this code has to be executed within the, the for loop. So I'm going to go ahead and actually type this on my phone. So I'll start by, um, first of all, creating a new project. Um, so I'm going to go with a new project. And I'm going to type in for. And you can see that the code is going to be highlighted. Like whenever you use these special um, like Python syntax, syntax um, you end up with this highlighted code. And if you're on the mobile app, there's also this um, snake key on the keyboard where you can uh, see these words as well. Um, so you can uh, quickly access them here instead of typing them out. Um, and then I'm going to put in the range from zero to eight. And now I'm going to type in M of zero call. So what we're doing here is we can see that the row stays consistent, so that's zero. And then it's this call or column value um, that changes as we loop throughout this for loop. So here we're using call and setting this equal to red. And now if you try running this code and previewing it, you'll see that you end up with one line that is red. And you can play around with the range values. So for example, instead of ending at eight, you can try and end at like five, let's say. And if I run that and preview that, I can see that I ended up with a shorter um, line. So basically it looped over these five values. So zero, one, two, three, four. And you can also change the starting value of the range. So you can go from like one to five, for example, do a run preview. And now you can see that we started from uh, one pixel to the, the right of zero. So we start at one and we go all the way up until the pixel on um, column four. 
So I'll stick back to 0, 08 so that we end up with that uh, rainbow that we saw earlier. And now let's figure out how to add some additional colors to the rainbow. So if we go ahead to the next slide, um, can anyone tell me what the indices would be here? So what should this uh, third line of code look like, like now in order for this uh, second line to, to show up or second row to show up as orange? I see that there's someone typing. Great, yeah, so M of one, which is row one. And then we, again, we use call equals, oh, great. So now if I run this and preview it, I can see that I ended up with um, an orange line. And there we are. Okay, and now let's go ahead and fill in the rest of the rainbow. So all of the colors on this rainbow are in the color keyboard. Um, so you can just use that. And I will also be typing along here in case you get stuck at any point. And don't forget um, to use the, um, to indent all of the code under the for loop. And if I forget to indent my code, so if I do this, for example, and try to run this, um, what happens is that I end up with only one pixel colored yellow. And this is like the last value that call had, um, which was seven, but it wasn't executed seven times like the other two pixels. So if I want it to be executed or eight times as like the other pixels, I can do this run, preview and end up with this. Great, and then we should just do this for the rest of the rainbow. Awesome, I see there's some interesting loops going on here in the chat. And it's great, Vicky, that you're you're seeing your older projects. Yeah, so the web app um, basically syncs with the, the mobile app in terms of your private projects, so you can access all of them on the web app. And yeah, if we have some more experienced coders here who prefer uh, typing or writing code on their computers, uh, you can definitely use the web app and that syncs with the mobile app, um, so you can open your projects on, on both. Awesome, okay, M of three and call. Where did we leave off? There's green, M of four and call equals, where are we at? Aqua, M of five and call equals blue. I'm gonna go with purple now, and then we have one last, which is magenta. And now if I run this and preview it, I can see that I have the rest of the rainbow colored in. And I'm just gonna save this project before I forget. You can also use emojis as your project titles if you'd like to. You can also add emojis to your code <laughs> if you want to, there's quite a few. Uh, we sometimes joke around and say emoji labs instead of emoji labs. We really like emojis in this company. I'll just put up this rainbow code up here as well. Oh, I, nice. I see you combined the smiley um, with the rainbow. That looks really cool. Awesome. Okay, so I see we have some, some loops going on here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead to the next um, concept we'll be learning about, which is animations. And I think this is like one of the most exciting things about coding in the Imagine Labs app. So actually bringing your code to life uh, with these animated projects. So for example, we could uh, make an animation where instead of just showing the full rainbow at once, uh, we actually show it one column at a time. So before we learn, see the code for that, and uh, we're going to learn a bit about animations in general. So this um, galloping horse is the first animation or like movie ever created. And so how exactly was this made? So it's basically made by putting together a lot of pictures which were taken one after the other or frames. 
And then um, if you play them really quickly one after the other, it basically looks like there's movement, right? Um, and so this is very similar to how we create movies today. So you might have heard of the term frames per second. Um, so that basically means, okay, how many frames are we playing per second? And so the way you create animations in the Imagilabs app is super similar. So we use frames and then we add them to an animation and then we play them one after the other uh, and end up with these animated projects. So we're going to start with a very basic animation. So I'm going to save my changes in this project and go ahead and create a new project. So we're going to start with something simple, so just two animated pixels. Um, and I'll go ahead and copy the code that I see on the slide over on my device. So m of zero and zero equals aqua, and then m of zero and one equals aqua. So now if I run this code, preview it, yeah, I see um, two aqua pixels over here. And what we're going to try and do now is actually animate these pixels. Um, so show one pixel and then two pixels. And so now we have a bit of theory, which is normally what you would learn in like, I guess a first semester um, of uh, like a computer science class at university. Uh, but we're going to learn how to um, apply this knowledge uh, right now to create these animations. So what we start, well, we, oh, okay. So what we have to start by doing is creating something called an object. So the way you do this is you first pick a name for your object. Um, I'm going to call it A, uh, which I will use as like a short version of animation. And then I'm going to set it equal to something called an animation class. So you just have to type in animation with a capital A and then put these round brackets um, opening and closing at the end of that. And then what I'm going to do is after each of these um, pixel uh, lines, type in a dot add underscore frame M. So what we're doing here is we're basically saying, okay, we wanna add some frames to our animation um, object. So you have to type in the name of the object, which is A, um, and then do something called um, calling a method or calling a function, which is in our case called add underscore frame. And then we want to basically add the matrix to our object or that current state of the matrix. So we do this by typing in round parentheses and then putting in an M. Um, and this will have to be done whenever you want to add frames to an animation. So you'll have to type in the name of your animation, in this case, A, and then dot add underscore frame M. And so what happens now is once I've typed that, if I run this, I can see that I've ended up with an animation where I see one pixel first, and then I see two pixels. And so what happens when you create um, add frames is that whatever you had in your previous frame is still present. Um, so if I wanted to clear the frames um, in between adding them, I could type in clear, like you can see on my phone right now, and then run that, preview that. And now you can see that instead of having one pixel and then two pixels, I only have one pixel show up at a, a time. Uh, but it's up to you. Maybe you want two pixels to show up at, at once. And then you can go ahead and add even more frames to your project if you want to. So I'll go ahead and type in like M of zero and seven, let's say, equals aqua. And then just type in the same line of code we did earlier, which is a dot add underscore frame. And now I can see that I have three frames. And because I didn't clear the code in between the frames, I can still see that second one. Um, but of course I can clear it if I want to. So just type in clear and that just resets the matrix so that you only have whatever pixel um, you colored before adding that frame in your frame. And there's definitely like a lot that you can do with this. Um, you can just browse through explore um, later on if you want some more inspo for these animations. Uh, but our goal for these animations was to, um, for now, create this uh, animated rainbow. So I'm going to exit this code for now. And I'm just going to call this like, okay, it's three pixel. 
animation, save that. And then I'm gonna go back to my rainbow. So hopefully you have that code saved somewhere. If not, it's up on this slide again. This time it's animated. So what I'm going to do is what I did before, which is add an animation object to my project by typing in A equals animation. And now the next step is to add frames to our animation. And instead of having to type A dot add frame every time we want to add one of these eight frames, all we have to do is just add it once inside of this for loop, because as we know, for loops run a certain number of times. Um, in this case, it, is, it runs for a total of eight times. So we can just press run here, preview. And now I can see that I actually have this um, rainbow show up column by column. And if I were to only add the frame once, if I didn't indent it inside of the for loop and tried to run this, I would just get the same project we did before. Um, and that's because I'm only adding the frame once. Um, so again, if you want to have this actually show up in, in an animated way, you have to make sure that you indent your code. And you can do that either by typing spaces or using the, the tab key on the keyboard. Great, so here we have it. We have this rainbow. And again, you can play around with the ranges. You could make a, like a smaller rainbow, like starting from three to let's say six. So it's just going over these, these values. And we can learn, or we can use clear um, like I did before. So if after adding each frame, you can type in clear. And then we only see one of the, the columns at a time. Cool. So there's definitely a lot you can do with animations. Um, so for example, we had one of our Imagi coders create this uh, rising sun. And then there's also this um, all time favorite, which is the smelting ice cream. Uh, and she even added this like fading effect, uh, which I thought was really cool. And again, if you browse through explore, you can definitely see um, a lot more of these animated projects. Great, okay. And I'm going to just pack in one more <laughs> programming concept into this workshop, which is uh, functions. So um, I mentioned functions earlier when we were adding frames, I said that that was a function that we were using. So we're gonna learn how to actually create functions ourselves. Um, and we're gonna learn how to use them to create something like this without having to repeat too much code. So functions basically make it easier to reuse code that you wrote. So let's go back to the Smiley project that we created earlier on. So I'm going to go over here, over here to the Smiley. Um, and here we have um, some, here, for example, the code was using um, like the, the predefined color variables. I'm using RGB values. You can use either one. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our code inside of a function. And the way you do this is you start by defining a function. So you tap in the word or the short term def, which is short for define, and then give your function a name. I'm gonna call it smiley. And then you have to add these uh, brackets, round brackets, um, and type that in like that. And then everything that's inside of your function, just like, we, just like with for loops, has to be indented. So I'm just gonna go here one by one and indent my code inside of the, the function. So this will take a little bit of patience if you're on the mobile app on tab, tab. Okay, so I wrote this function. So I defined it by typing in def and then giving a name to my function. Um, and now I'm gonna run this code. Oops, I got an exception. So the exception says that the matrix is empty, which is confusing maybe because I typed in so much code. But the reason for this is that after defining a function, you actually have to, to call it. And the way you call a function is by just typing in its name and these uh, parentheses again. And now if I run this and preview this, okay, I have my smiley, it's over here. 
And so another thing we can do with functions is add something called parameters um, to our functions, which you can then change whenever you call the function. So for example, here we have this eye and mouth uh, variables. And what I'm going to do is add them as parameters to my function. And then I'm going to remove them from this function definition. And now when I call the function, I have to basically, I can now assign the, the values for the eye and mouth variables. So in this case, I'll do A and R. So basically we turned our variables into function parameters. Um, and now when we call the function, we can just directly add these parameters. And when you call, call, fun when you call functions, um, these parameters actually are called arguments. Um, yeah, there's a bit of terminology there, but all you need to know is that basically when you call a function, you just have to assign values to these parameters that you added to the definition. So now if I run this and preview this, I can see that I have the aqua eyes and red mouth. And then if I wanna change these values, I can go ahead and type in like yellow um, magenta and run that, preview that. Okay, and what I wanted to do was um, by to end this workshop by combining our knowledge of animations and functions to create this uh, smiley, which alternates um, its eye and mouth colors. So at the very top of our code, we now have to add an animation object like this, uh, which is what we did earlier. And now I'm going to type in a.addFrame after my first smiley function call and then do another smiley function call. And you can do whatever colors you like. I'll do magenta and yellow, and then add this as another frame. I'm gonna run this now, preview that. And I can see now that I've ended up with um, this alternating smiley. So I realized that might've been really fast, uh, but again, this code is available for you to look at later um, and I'm available to answer questions as well. Um, and there's so much that you can do with uh, coding in general and with the Imagilabs app. Um, so we have projects that are like super creative. Um, so for example, we have this uh, color wheel that a user created, and then we have like more logical projects, for example. Um, so someone created this project where they randomly generate a number between one and six. And so they were able to use the Imagi charm as basically a die when they were playing board games. Um, so that's like a fun application of coding as well. And we have a lot of resources through which you can actually um, find, uh, find out more. Okay, nice, Vicky. It's so awesome to see someone with an actual Imagi charm at this workshop. Awesome. So I'm just going to send some links now in the chat um, for these various resources I linked here. So there is the Learning Hub. And the Learning Hub is, or our Learning Center actually, is where you can find project samples um, and you can also find more learning materials um, and an FAQ and lots of Imagi goodies um, to help you on your learning journey. So I'm gonna send the link over here in the chat for the Learning Center. What else we have is um, we really love challenges um, and we have something called a 30 days of code challenge where you have 30 prompts um, for various projects that you could create. And if you manage to do all 30 of these, you get a super cool badge um, in, the, in the app. So I'll link to this as well. And this is also under the learning center um, that I linked earlier. And then what we also have is a Discord server. Um, so maybe some of you use Discord, but this is basically a place for our community to come together. And if you have any questions, you can ask them there. Um, and we also have uh, some voting sessions there for the Imagi challenges that we, we run in the app. Um, but this is the best place to stay up to date with everything that we have going on at Imagi Labs. So I'll just send the Discord invite link over here. Great. So that, yeah. So, and then there's probably other resources I'm forgetting about, but yeah, we also have our website at imagilabs.com. Um, if you are curious about uh, the Imagi Charm, you can um, check it out um, there. 
And I'm actually going to make a discount code for the participants for this section, session. Um, so if you use EuroPython 15, you'll get a 15% discount. And I'll make sure to activate that uh, right after I'm done with this session. Um, so yeah, that was it for today. Um, I'll link again to the, the slides here so that I can make sure. Um, let's see, how do I exit this? Okay. Uh, so that I can make sure that everyone can access these later. Cool. Um, creative coding in Python slides. Okay, and I guess we have a few more minutes, so maybe I could answer some questions here if there are any questions. Um, but that was it in terms of the coding part of today's session. Yeah, thank you so much. I think there are quite a few people typing, so we can uh, wait for sure. a little yeah. bit and see. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much to everyone who participated today. Um, it was great to see some a Kickstarter backer here as well. Yeah, so the, the Kickstarter project is actually how we we funded our first batch of uh, Imagine Charms, and it looks like Vicky here was um, one of our earliest supporters. Thank you for that. Yeah, I, I personally had a lot of fun as well. Uh, just just now, I think this is a really nice way to spend the lunch break and, and a little bit more to just play with some code and colors. I think it was really lovely. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for participating along with the workshop. Yeah, let's let's wait for more people to see whether they have any questions. Um, would you be hanging about a little bit more during the conference in case people want to catch up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be I'll be available on um, this uh, messaging system. And then also, if I'm not available there, um, you can also email me at paola at imagilabs.com and we can continue the conversation there. Um, and Vicky, in terms of centers for the Imagine Charm, um, so that's um, on our roadmap. But right now we're actually working on a really exciting development uh, with bringing a game to the Imagine Charm. Um, and you'll be finding out more about that soon, hopefully. Yes, same Vicky. I can I cannot wait as well. Really excited about this. Yeah. Um, so the Imagine Charm itself. So the Imagine Charm is not actually running Python. Um, so we run Python in the cloud, um, and then we just uh, send over the the output um, to the Imagine Charm via Bluetooth. So you actually need internet access to be able to use the app um, and run code there for now. But maybe yeah, one day we will actually run it on the Imagine Charm. And that's also, of course, how we make the output of the code available on the device, even if you don't have the on your mobile device, even if you don't have an Imagi term. Okay, I'll, I guess um, the session is up, but I'll stick around in the in the chat uh, yes. a bit more and answer any yeah. more questions there. Yeah, but feel yeah, free to so just. For this. No, no worries. Yeah, so feel free to just use the 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 chats over there by text and leave the Zoom for now. And you could also join the Wonder Me on the, in the lounge area so that you can form a little circle and then chat in a more like social way. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. So Have a good rest of your yeah. conference. Thank you. We'll take another hour of a break and then come back later for the last interactive session. Thank you very cool. much, Paula. Bye. Bye. Thank you.